Hello everyone and welcome to my channel Decorous Vintage Designs. Today I'm going to be showing you how to get an old world look with silk paint, glaze and a sea spray. So I started by getting my Dixie Belle sea spray and mixing it with their silk paint white cap. As you can see the texture is quite gloopy but it, it's still movable and I'm just going to start by stippling this all over this uh, console table. So this piece is one that I've had in my hallway for quite a while but because I'm starting to redecorate it's just not working there anymore so I've decided to give it a whole new look and I will be popping this in my shop. I didn't really do a great deal to this before I started putting this layer of paint onto it because I know this is going to be a textured look all I decided to do was give it a very light sand and a very good clean before I started with the fresh layer of paint. This colour that I'm using is a beautiful white with just a tint of grey in it and as I say I am just putting this everywhere and I'm also making sure that there's no big clumps of texture for this. I just want the texture to be very very soft and what you can also do if you're finding that the paint isn't moving very much is you can actually just use very light feathered strokes and that can help get the paint moving while also creating that kind of stippled texture that I'm looking for here. I'm going to be making sure that I've got very good coverage as I'm doing this as well uh, just because there is a lot of blue paint underneath. I could have sanded it and I could have let there be, uh, I could have sanded it down to the wood but I just decided not to, I just decided personally it wasn't worth the time. However if you are starting from a fresh piece or you have got a piece that you sanded down back down to the wood then I would actually leave some gaps in there because I think gaps can offer a very a unique distress look without having to do much sanding so you don't necessarily have to do full coverage when doing this kind of style but in this case I am just because I don't want the blue paint peeking. For the second layer I've got the sea spray again as you can see and I'm just going to pop just a little bit of this back into my bowl and now I'm going to grab Sandcastle which is another um, Dixie Belle paint and also Wharf and just it's just going to be a 50-50 mixture of each together and I am just going to stipple this over the top. This time as I'm stippling I am not too worried about full coverage, I'm more than happy for that white to peek through. The colour that I've created as well um, is just a much more muted version of the Sandcastle. I just felt like I didn't want it completely grey and I didn't want the very beigey look of the sandcastle either. So by combining the wharf and the sandcastle together it's almost created a kind of burlap, I don't know, maybe even a French linen sort of look and it's just going to help me give it this very faded antiquity kind of manor house style that I'm going for here. If you are deciding you want to stipple your brush, aka dabby dabby your brush, um, then just make sure that you're using a chip brush that you don't care about too much. Eventually this does really wear your brush out, especially if you are using sea spray as well. For Zampton Olive, which I have just poured into a cup, I am now going to pour a little bit of my wharf back into there, and then some water. And also I have decided then to add some of the Anchor, which is a black paint from Dixie Belle. And that's just to give it a bit more of a cooler edge. So I've got a stencil brush, you can use any brush you want. And I am just speckling this onto the piece now and dry brushing a little bit around the edges where I actually just, um, yeah, some of the blue started poking through, which I didn't like. So I've just decided to dry brush some of that around. As you're speckling, it is a little bit of a messy business so uh, you might want to make sure that certain things are protected um, and also I mean I don't worry about my wall too much because it's kind of an old world wall so it would actually just help <laughs> the way it looks um, but yeah so make sure that anything any surroundings are protected because it does make a bit of a mess and if you find that your paint is too gloopy then you might just want to add a little bit of water to help that move around again. By speckling what we're doing is we're creating a foxing look just to create more age to the piece. What I have here now is Dixie Belle's Van Dyke Brown Glaze and this is just going to help add a bit of a sheen to the piece which you might have found in older pieces 
I have mixed it with water to water it down a little bit so it's not too overpowering and I'm also doing here something that's called ragging and what ragging is is when you grab a paper towel I've got kitchen towel or you could even just use an old rag and you basically just blotch away and it creates this really unique distressed sort of texture and it makes sure that the um, the paint or the glaze that you're using just isn't too blockish it just helps kind of tone it down a little bit you need to make sure that the paint is completely dry underneath as well before you do this otherwise it's just going to completely bring up the paint underneath and you probably won't like that look I'm also just adding a teeny tiny little bit at a time um, on each section and then ragging I'm not doing the whole piece and then doing it because the likelihood is, is that the glaze will dry before I get to the ragging part so I am just working in sections Next up is Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in Clear and I have a large redesign with Prima round brush which is my favourite and I'm just going to start out by applying this to the top of the piece and I will be working in sections again. Here is Best Dang Wax in White and I'll be honest I didn't really like the way this looked so I only used it the once in this piece here and then I didn't bother using it again, I just wasn't a fan of the way it was looking. And now I have some brown wax and I have the Bell brush by Dixie Bell, which is a small uh, natural brush, bristle brush and I'm just rubbing that all into the sides of this piece. I'm then grabbing my clear wax and I'm just blending it kind of the way that you might do paint just to make sure that there are no kind of thick edges and no big blotches. So you can see here that the glaze has dried and that's also added a little bit of age into this piece because it's kind of dried a little bit darker around the edges and made it look worn. And after clear waxing you'll notice I'm not using the white again because I didn't like it and I'm just going to go straight in there with my brown wax and I'm going to apply this all around the edges and the bottom of the spindles as well because this just helps make the piece look more antique and aged. The clear wax is very good as well so it acts as a protector so if you use too much dark wax you can just come in there with your clear wax and then blend it out or you can actually erase it with your clear wax so it's always better to put a little bit of clear wax on to start with before you go in there with any dark or white wax because it just means then that wax isn't going to sink straight into the furniture and look blotchy it means you can erase it I blended these drawers out a little bit too much with my clear wax so I'm going back in here again with the brown and you know I'm always telling people to experiment and that's what this is about so you can just play you've got plenty of time to play with these waxes to get it just as you want it and I think this is looking much better now than what it was before if you feel you have used a little bit too much wax and um, there's a lot of excess I would give it 15 minutes at that point you can just grab a tissue or a rag and just wipe it off or you can leave it overnight and just see how it's looking the next day because there is only so much that the wood can um, that can take that can take. So the wood is only porous to a certain extent, and if you use a little bit too much wax, then that wax is likely never going to sink in. So just make sure that you wipe off that excess. I just thought I would add a little bit of bling to this. So um, this is the Thornton Medallion by Redesign with Prima Mold, and I have used this with resin. Um, so. When using resin, as it's curing, I, I use some quick casting resin by PS Composites and as it's curing, it is a little bit bendy, so I was able to bend it onto there, uh, onto that curve there. You can also use paper clay if that's your preference. Um, I did then paint it in um, Redesign with Prima's Eternal Wax and I'm also just adding this to the doors again because I just want them to look completely kind of like they were once belonged into a rich country manor. There was some paint on the drawer edges there as you can see and I did give them a good sand because I, the last thing you want is very ugly kind of unsmooth looking drawers plus it can affect the way the drawers open and close so if you are redoing a piece then just make sure that you have sanded those edges down. I also make sure I use old brushes when I'm using decor waxes 
Um, you can also use your fingers depending on how much that you want to do. Um, but I do find they can also ruin the brush bristles a little bit. Um, it dries very quickly and the brush bristles tend to never be the same again after using it. So just make sure you use old brushes when doing this piece if you want that instead of your hand. I've just got a little artist brush here as well and I'm just deciding to kind of, I want I want the piece to look like it's had gold on it that's, that's worn off or, or maybe patinaed a little bit so I've added some around the edges to the mould and that's just going to look like the gold has kind of speckled off a little bit over time and I've also added a little bit um, to the edges and uh, spindles as well. So here's some rich copper by Redesign with Prima. And again, just to get that patina look and a little bit of rust, um, I am just dry brushing this around the edges of the bold as well. I just want it to look like it's kind of just, it's just gotten old, hasn't it? So we just want it to look like it's gone, gotten a little bit patinaed and rusty. If you enjoyed this video, guys, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, I appreciate you all and have a great day.